Oh yes, we are. Yay, we're live. Hello everyone. It's Joe and Sue from Pods and Posh and Pool. I'm in the dark. And today we are talking, there we go, parenting and if your child, teenager, tween has got anxiety, which we know a lot of people are suffering from at the minute. So we're just going to give three quick tips for you and hopefully it will help your household, help you and help your lovely child. Tip one. Do you want to go first, Sue? Yes. Your power tip. Yes, and my tip is releasing oxytocin. We have four happy chemicals that we can release in our body. We want the happy chemicals. We don't want the unhappy ones, which is the adrenaline and the cortisol. We want to compensate for them. So three little tips is give someone a hug, instant release of oxytocin. In that moment, you don't need to wait five minutes. You don't need to wait 10 minutes. Have a hug, instant release oxytocin. Number two, pets incredible for children if you haven't got a pet a little hamster not a rat maybe a dog a cat they're so good for children so if you've got a child in anxiety ask your child to take the dog for a walk or just sit and look after the animal you could just say look the dog's feeling a bit sad today can you just go and look after him and number three we have a natural mechanism in our body to release oxytocin which is crying when we release tears they are actually healing tears because oxytocin calms us down, makes us feel better, and there's nothing better than having a really good cry, getting it out of the system. So don't stop your children crying, encourage them to cry, give them a hug and say, cry it all out. And so therefore, three tips to get oxytocin going around our body. So you did three tips in tip one, which confused yeah. me, but I'm, yeah. I'm with it now. Three threes are nine. Should we do nine? I thought you were just doing I three tips and I just, I, I just had to shut up today. <laughs> Well, that, shall, that, shall that be me talking? Shall I just go make a cup of tea now? You can carry on. <laughs> okay, tip two for me is, and I love that. I love the oxytocin. I love what you've said because sometimes we don't give enough hugs, do we? And we don't do enough physical touching, you know, especially as our kids are getting older. So much easier to hug them when they're little and they're crying. But even then it's very tempting to say, oh, don't cry, honey, don't cry. Let the tears flow, let them go. You know, because then there's so many repressed adults who don't feel like they can cry. So allow your child to cry. So I love, I love your tips. Thank you, Sue. My tip is you don't have to understand what your child's anxious about. So you don't even need to try to understand. That's not important. The important thing is to not tell them that they're silly for feeling anxious about something. So it's the words we use. So you know, if your child is anxious about going to school, you know, it's not worth saying, oh, but you've got to go to school. It's not helpful to them. Instead, you just go, oh, honey, you know, what is it that makes you anxious about school? Because then you're going to learn more. It might be the fact that they don't like walking to school because they've got nobody to walk with. It might be they don't like a specific teacher. It might be they, they feel overwhelmed at home. Like, who knows what it is? The most important thing when your child is talking to you is for you to listen without judgment and don't try to make it okay it's not we we can't do that think about when you're feeling anxious about something very seldom does somebody say something that makes it all go away in fact never happens so if we can just listen to our child and we, again, we don't have to understand it. It can seem like they're anxious over the most silliest things, but we're all human and we all get like that. So the more we can just listen and talk their words back to them, you know, if you don't understand, oh, so you're anxious about going to school. What is that about? Why is that? If we can just talk back and listen openly without judgment, I think that's one of the safest things we can give to anyone, not just our child, actually. Um, yeah, and just give them that safe space to let it all out because the more they can let it out and share, perhaps the less anxious they're going to be. Or they And they've got the answers inside of them as well, haven't they, Sue? Yeah, you're totally right, Jo. Empower them in their feelings and say, you are right to feel really anxious right now because A, B and C has happened. And if you didn't feel it, you wouldn't be normal. It's okay to have those feelings. Where does it hurt? What do you actually feel? You do feel sad, do you feel angry and actually empower them in their feelings as well. So, so important, accept people where they're at and encourage them to talk about their feelings and understand and be able to verbalise actually what they're feeling. Yeah, great one. Am I allowed to speak again? Because I yes, know I've got three in my three. 
So my last one is nature. Go outside in nature. So if you've got kids that don't want to go for a walk, you could say to them, look, I've got to take some flowers around to so and so a couple of houses away. Could you possibly just go into the garden and pick me some flowers? Or could you just go and get some leaves? Or could you go and get some shells on the beach? I need you to do something, set them a task rather than saying, look, just go for a walk. The other thing is we often say to kids, don't go outside, it's raining. Go outside in the rain, take your kids to walk in the rain, feel the weather, feel the wind when it's really wild and windy and we live near the beach, we're really lucky. People tend to stay inside. That's the time when mine were little. I'd say, come on, get your muddy boots on, get your coats on. We're going to go and walk in the storm. We're going to walk in the waves. We're going to get the waves over our welly boots and just have some fun and have laughter as well. Sorry, I added another one in there. Laughter. You know I keep what, them in, don't I? We could actually probably give about 10, 15, 20 tips, but we laughter. just wanted to give you three really quick ones today that you can instantly put into your life right here, right now. Hugging, right. letting them cry, Go out in nature as much as you can because fresh air does us all the world of good. We're not supposed to be sitting inside all the time. You're right and get that vitamin D, get a bit of fresh air in your lungs, run and jump and laugh if you can because that's all added bonus. And then just listen, listen, listen without judgment. And I know parents, it's so hard. It's so hard seeing mm. your child anxious, upset, in despair, it is, it's really hard. And sometimes we feel like it's our fault. It's not your fault. Just hug them, hold them, listen to them, and then go to the bathroom and cry it out if you need to. You know, you've got to let it out as well. Let, you know, let it be kind to yourself. Be kind to you. So if you feel that's helpful and you'd like some more information on tips for parenting, we have a webinar coming up on Wednesday, 27. October 7 p.m. New Zealand time and if you want the link for that it's on Eventbrite but if you go direct to our Facebook page impact hyphen mental health or our podcast page pods with posh and pool you will find the link to Eventbrite so pop on there we have parents that have already bought tickets so if that's you and you bought tickets for a live event but we've had to cancel because of a lockdown you have been sent an email so check your emails but if you'd like to join our webinar and it will be parenting teens looking at resilience and coping mechanisms in the COVID ridden world, rapidly changing uncertain times. We're gonna give you lots of tips in a one hour session with questions and answers at the end. Yep, we can't wait to see you. And just as a little bit, because you've had a few questions about it. If you can't join us live, the link will be live for a week. So even if you pay for the ticket, you'll have access to it for a week after the event. So yes, yeah, so you don't have to be there necessarily. And if you've got any pressing questions, there is an opportunity to send us an email when you buy the ticket to ask us the questions. So hopefully your questions will be answered as well. And the great and thing about not being live is that you can have it in the comfort of your own home. You can have a cup of tea, you can have a bottle of water. You could be reading a book at the same time, our book at the same time. You don't need to drive in the dull weather. You don't need to find parking space. You don't need to get babysitting or childcare. So you can just sit and watch in the comfort of your own home. As Jo says, you can have the link afterwards for a week. So share it with your friends as well. Yeah, and like, you know, we've just obviously done three tips today on dealing with anxiety if there's any like other areas that you're concerned about let us know we know that this is absolutely right at the minute you know there's lots of people in anxiety so we're seeing it all the time with clients these are simple things that actually help our clients that they help our children they help us they are lived experience these things work we don't just pick them out of a hat and spout them off they they are working with our clients as well and our yeah. own children yeah very much so. and as Jo says we've got increased clients at the moment the mental health stats have gone off the scale so we're seeing so many people so if you're feeling that your children are in depression high anxiety it's normal there's nothing that you're doing wrong it's really challenging times but stay with us and we'll be giving you more tips as we go yes. have a great weekend we'll see you next week oh it's me who's got to end it yes